Welcome to Trivial Knits. My name is Laura and I live in Los Angeles. I am a knitter. I have been knitting for about 20 years and this channel is just about what I've been knitting and we do a little bit of knitting trivia as well. So the channel name has a couple of different meanings. One is the knitting trivia. We do trivia questions about yarn, fiber, all that stuff. I'm a big trivia fan. I'm a two-time Jeopardy champ. That's sort of my claim to fame. That's part of the reason why I called the channel Trivial Knits. And the other reason is that I mostly knit accessories um, and they're not necessarily meant to be the most practical things in the world. They're kind of trivial, um, but I do sort of colorful hats, cowls, scarves, shawls, gifts um, for other people, basically anything that would be fun to work on, keep my hands busy, keep my brain busy. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing with this knitting thing. Um, so this is, I believe, the fifth episode, and this is going to be a monthly roundup. So I'm going to chat about what I knit in the month of March 2024. Um, I have some finished objects. I have some works in progress. I have some new acquisitions this month. Um, even though I am trying not to bring a lot of new yarn into my stash, I did bring a few things. Um, so I will share those toward the end of the video. And then of course, at the very end, we will do our trivia question as we do at the end of every video on this channel. All right, I think that covers everything I needed to say to introduce myself. Um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, if you've been watching my previous videos and commenting and liking and subscribing, I so appreciate it. Um, it's good motivation to keep going with these and I'm gonna keep going with this channel as long as it's fun. So uh, hopefully that will be for a good long while. The first thing I want to mention before I get into the knits is the Knit for Food fundraiser that I participated in last month or in March. I told you about it in my last video. Thank you to everyone who donated um, and thank you in particular to everyone who donated on my team. I um, said that I would raffle off a knitted object that I have made. Um, so I'm going to remind you what that was. So this is the um, striation scarf. I think it's scarf, not shawl, um, by Amba O'Brien. And this is made from my 2023 advent that I bought from Grenoy Company. Um, so it's got 25 different colors of merino yarn and it's a nice sort of lightweight scarf. And um, I, Everyone who donated to my team, I weighted your entry into the raffle based on the number of dollars that you donated. And then I sort of picked somebody uh, at random. And the winner was Kim with the last initial U. Um, and so I emailed Kim, but I haven't heard back. So Kim, if you're watching this, check your email, check your spam, leave a comment. Um, so that I can get in touch with you and send this to you. Um, if I don't get in touch with you in about a week after posting this video, I'm gonna move on to another, I'll draw another name um, so that I can make good on the raffle promise and send this off to someone. But again, thank you to Kim and thank you to everybody who donated to the Knit for Food fundraiser. Um, I think they raised close to $400,000 for four organizations that are addressing hunger and food insecurity in the United States and around the world. So that was great. And I was glad to play a very small part. Um, so thank you everyone who supported me with that. Um, okay, so let's jump into the finished objects for the month of March. One of them is this hat that I'm wearing, but I'm going to um, get to it in a few minutes. So just hang tight on that. Um, the first one I want to share is a test knit that um, I recently completed. So let me grab it. So it's a big one. It's 
This is the Stripeometry or Stripeometry um, shawl by Stephen West. I'm going to back up so you can see the whole thing. It's always hard to sort of show things in the camera here and get the light on it. Um, but you can see it's a very large uh, shawl. So this um, was a test knit that um, I finished earlier in March and then it the pattern was just released on March 29th or 30th, I wanna say. Um, so it's a very recent release. Um, it is all garter stitch and it's modularly constructed. So you start here and you make this little triangle. I think you start, you start with this long stripe in the, and I use a yellow color. I mean, you could use any three colors that you wanted. Um, and then you stripe the first two colors and you make this triangle. Then you pick up along the edge of the triangle and you make another triangle that's a bit longer. So that uses colors two and three. Then where do you go next? Then you do this section of sort of single row stripes. So here, and this is colors one and three. Then you do the point of the shawl in the first two colors again and you just keep uh, knitting and decreasing until you get to the tip. Then you go back to section two, or no, section three, and you pick up another uh, set of stitches here and make another triangle with colors two and three again. Um, and then you do an I-cord border all the way around the whole thing. So. Um, it's a very fun knit. It's pretty easy. Um, if I guess the hardest thing about it is that they're short rows, um, but they're not hard. They're just, um, they're not hard short rows. I, I don't even think there's wrap and turns. I think you just sort of turn it around um, at the moment when you need to change directions. There, you know, there might be wrap and turns. I'm not sure, but it's not hard. Um, and it's really fun way to play with color. I used three colors of West Wool Bicycle, which is a fingering weight yarn from Stephen and Penelope. It's the house yarn at Stephen West's um, yarn store. And uh, the colors I used were, the yellow is called Glow. The sort of brick red is called Cardamuma. And this really pale color is called white peach. So yeah, but it's it's a fun way to play with color. If you um, liked Stephen West's Vertices Unite shawl, which I know is a pretty popular one of his, then this would be a fun one for you to do as well. Because um, it's sort of that similar kind of modular construction garter stitch stripes. This one is a different shape. So I, I, I don't know if you can see it in the whole thing, but it's, you know, it's a big triangle, which is not my favorite shawl shape to wear, but um, it was a test knit. So I really, you know, I didn't want to modify it. I wanted to knit it as the pattern called for. Um, I think if I was going to do, I don't know if I would do this again. I think I would do another Vertices Unite um, before I would do this one again, but um, it was definitely fun to do and a fun way to, um, play with color, which I think I've said like three or four times now already. Um, <clears throat> so I did keep sort of n good notes on how long each section took me. I don't know if that's useful for people to know. Um, but this first section took me two days, uh, to finish. Um, then the second section took, uh, four days here. Um, the third section took six days. I'm not sure why it took so long, maybe because it was more boring. I don't know. Um, and then the fourth section took me eight days. This is, it's probably the largest section. 
And then uh, the last section here took me three days and the border took me another three days. Um, probably because I took breaks because it's an I-cord border and that's a little, can be a little tedious, but the effect is very um, polished. And so I like that, of course. Um, so I'm gonna maybe put this on for the next few minutes. Um, so you can see it a little bit, but yeah, so highly recommend this pattern, fun, easy. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it would be like the best first thing you ever knit, but if you're watching this, you probably are not thinking about knitting your first object ever. Um, so I do recommend it. And I think that's that for this, uh, the stripe geometry. Um, the second knit that I wanted to share this month was another test knit uh, that I did for Stephen West. I actually finished it last year, but I'm logging it in March because the pattern was released in March. And <clears throat> um, Stephen's test knits are always secret until the pattern is released. So I couldn't share it on Instagram or anything until the pattern was released. So we're counting it toward March and toward my 2024 totals. Um, I actually don't have it with me because uh, my daughter wanted to wear it to school today. So I really didn't, I couldn't tell her no, uh, I let her have it. Um, so I'll pop a picture up here. So it's the Briornate hat, again by Stephen West. Um, and this is part of, he did a whole kind of series of patterns using um, a few different stitch techniques um, that I guess are called the Briornate stitched stitches um, because there's some brioche involved and then the rest of them are ornate, I guess. Um, there's some dip stitches. Um, I can't remember exactly what else, but you know, just like different little fun techniques. Um, so for this hat, I used West Wool Tandem, which is the DK weight um, yarn that West Wool sells. That's Stephen and Penelope. Um, and the, the color I used was lichen. And the reason I gave it to my daughter was the, I, I ended up making it a little, it ended up a little small um, on the small side. And the color I found is like not super flattering on me. So yeah, but she loves it. It's great for her. Um, what else to say about that one? I did modify that one a little bit, even though it was a test knit, um, because it was, the pattern is sort of written as a slouchy hat, and I much prefer a closer fitting beanie with a folded brim. So I extended the brim a bit, and I reduced the um, number of stitch motifs that I ended up doing in the hat. And I think I might have sort of narrowed the bands of them to make sure the total length of the hat would be right. So yeah, so I do, I recommend that pattern as well. It's fun if you want to try different techniques. Um, it's a good DK weight hat pattern. And yeah, I think that's that. So um, that's that was my second finished object for March. Um, the third is a scarf that I think I talked about uh, in my Advent video, um, which was episode four, where I talked about um, the advents I bought in past years and patterns that I have made with them. And there was one pattern that I hadn't made yet, but I was intending to make to use up my botanical yarn advent. So here it is. This is the Mrs. Watson shawl. And I'm going to back up again, see if you can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, so it is knit with short rows. You start at this end. I don't think I said the designer's name. I think it's Martina Beam is the designer of this. This is not a new pattern or a recent pattern. I have had it in my Ravelry library for years, like at least four or five years. Um, but I don't know, I just was never motivated to make it until I realized I could use up 
my botanical yarn advent, which was a fade, um, and end up with a really nice sort of gradient effect on this shawl. So back to where I was with the constructions, you start at this end and I started with, you know, one of the, the first color in the advent fade and the advent was fingering weight yarn, but this pattern calls for DK weight. So I could marl them together, which is what also helps um, sort of um, play into the fade aspect of the advent. So you start here and then you have these sort of stripes that are made with short rows as well. Um, actually the stripes are the only part that have the short rows. Um, so that's what gives them that sort of shape. And I used knitting for olive merino in, I think the color is thundercloud. Um, so that's also a fingering weight. So I held it double. Um, and so I just alternated that with the um, advent yarns, which I also held double and marled. So it sort of passes. I, I rearranged the advent. I'm not sure if this was the original order of the colors, but um, this is how I wanted to arrange them for this object. So I've got yellows and then it goes into some pale greens and then some blues and then some purples. And then actually the advent continues. I think there were about six more skeins that I didn't get to that are pink. Um, so those can be used for something else. But this turned out just exactly how I wanted it to. I actually cast it on once. Um, I must have been using the sort of recommended needle size and it was really, the gauge was really tight. Um, like the fabric was kind of stiffer than I thought would work for this. And I, I could see, I got, you know, maybe about this far into it and could tell like the shawl was going to be really small which is fine sometimes but it just it wasn't exactly what I was imagining and I wanted to use up a lot of the yarn so I um, frogged it and then increased a needle size at least one maybe two sizes and started over and then ended up with this object which I think turned out great um what else can I say about it uh well so the first the first cast on, um, I spent about eight days on that one. I didn't get very far, but I just, you know, I got, I was doing a little bit every day. And then I got to a point where I realized it wasn't working. So I, uh, again, frogged it. This version took me 10 days total. So it was kind of like once I got going and I could see that it was working out, I was a little more motivated to work on it. So it went pretty quickly after that. So, yeah. So this is Mrs. Watson by Martina Beam. All right, uh, finished object number four is this hat that I am wearing. And this one I talked about in my February um, summary video uh, because I had cast it on with a different yarn. So this is the March hat by Megan Babin. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I had cast it on with... Um, Weekend Wool by Green Mountain Spinnery. And um, I don't know, it just wasn't working. Someone, uh, you know, the um, the ribbing was like too, it wasn't pulling in the way it was supposed to, I think because the, the thickness of the yarn was just kind of too big for the needle size that I had decided to use. Now, I don't, not sure exactly why it didn't work out. Um, because I have done a worsted weight one by one rib on a size three needle in another hat that I recently made. And that kind of turned out just the way I wanted. Um, but this one, it just, it didn't work. So I'm not sure if the the yarn weight was a little bit different or the, the spin of the yarn was different or what exactly um, accounted for the fact that it just was not the way I wanted it. But um, I decided to just, you know, scrap it frog it, start over with another yarn. So this is Knit Picks Swish Worsted, um, which is a super wash merino wool. Um, and I wasn't sure how this would be in terms of, I don't know, the, the pattern, but I actually 
kept getting these Instagram ads for nitpicks um, that showed a hat made in this yarn, not this color, but this yarn. And it had cables and the stitch definition in the ad was really good. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just hope there's truth in advertising here. It seems like this is gonna be a good yarn for this March hat. So I had it in my stash already. So I just went ahead and cast it on. I did not go down to the size three needle for this. Um, I guess I was just, I felt like, oh, okay, it didn't work with that other worsted weight yarn. So I, I don't wanna risk it with this one. So I'm pretty sure I just followed um, the pattern, which called for the ribbing to be down in a size five. And then this part, this textured part, which is just made with knits and pearls, um, was with a size seven needle. So the hat is like quite loose, I would say. It just kind of sits on my head. It doesn't like pull in, which is okay. I do like a hat to be a little tighter. Um, and, and this also, the superwash yarn is like really light feeling. So there's not like a snugness or a weight feeling on my head, which is fine. You know, if that's what you're into, then I would recommend this yarn. Um, I still recommend it. Um, I think this hat turned out well. It is pretty warm, even though the yarn is superwash, which can sometimes I think be a little less warm, but um, it does seem to be holding a lot of air in the um, stitch pattern. So it is warm on my head. Um, okay, so yeah, so I spent a couple days on the previous version, scrapped it. This one took 10 days to finish, which a hat really doesn't usually take 10 days. I think I just was doing a very small amount per day. Um, but yeah, that's how it ended up. I, I love this color. This is like maybe my favorite color to work with. Um, I think it's pretty close to the color of the, the Trivial Knits font. Um, so that's not an accident. Um, I did really, um, I do just love this color. I loved looking at it as I was knitting with it. I still have some more in my stash. So I have cast on another project with it, which I will get to when I get to works in progress. Um, so yeah, so that's the March hat. Then let's see, I think I just have one more finished object that I cast on in March and I finished in March. Oh. And this hat, it's called the March hat. It, kind of just a coincidence that I made it in March, but I guess I was sort of motivated to finish it. So I could say I finished it in March. And actually, um, I was at a local yarn store. I, I was on a trip to Michigan this past weekend. Um, so I visited a local yarn store, which I'll talk about in a minute. But somebody at the yarn store, like another customer, um, recognized the pattern and said, oh, is that from the year of hats? Um, which is the series, there's 12, 12 hats. This is the March hat. Um, so that was fun. Always fun when your knitting gets recognized in public, um, which doesn't happen to me that much because I don't tend to go to local yarn, star yarn stores that frequently, but so it was a fun moment uh, at um, the yarn store in Michigan. Um, okay, so uh, last finished object for March is this is a gift. So this is a little baby dress. This is called the Rio dress. And the designer is Tyga Hilliard. I have made several of these in the past. I made one for my daughter. I have made them as gifts a few different times. So I find it to just be a good gift pattern. It goes fairly quickly. Um, I mean, this took me about 14 days of knitting um, to finish. I modified it a little bit because uh, the, the original pattern is not necessarily written to be striped. Um, so I, but I didn't have enough of one color to do the dress in a solid color. And I think stripes are fun to knit. So um, I did it stripes. And so the original pattern has um, you know, it has the seed stitch uh, edges uh, around the neck and the armholes and the hem, but it also has a seed stitch panel that goes down the center and around the sort of waist. I guess you could call this like an empire waist. It's kind of a high waist. Um, but I took that out. Um, so it just, it's just stuck in it. 
um, with only the edges done in the seed stitch. But I think it turned out very cute. Um, the baby it was for was not due for a couple months, but the baby actually ended up coming right after I cast this on. So um, this is the newborn size. I think that baby will end up fitting this around when their due date was. Um, so I think it's okay. Uh, it's going to go off in the mail as soon as I finish this video um, to the baby that it's for. Um, what else can I say about this one? Oh, the yarn that I used was Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino Sport Weight. And I'm not exactly sure of the colors, but you know, it's like a cream color, a sort of a baby pink, a blush, and a, mm, a darker rose kind of color, pink. So yeah, turned out cute, I think. Oh, and then I, I put uh, these little two buttons. The buttons are meant to go in the back. Um, I think they might be a little bit of a choking hazard if they were in the front. Um, but this is for a newborn. I don't think the newborn's gonna really be able to manipulate the buttons or do anything with them. Um, so should be fine. Uh, okay, so that's those are my five finished objects for March. I have a few works in progress. Um, let's see, the first one is a project that I think almost every YouTuber that I watch has made. Um, so I definitely jumped on the bandwagon. It usually takes me a year or two to follow the knitting trends, like the Sophie scarf I didn't, or the Sophie shawl I didn't make until much after everybody made theirs. Um, I'm trying to think of what other trends I've jumped on. I'm not sure what else, but this one, uh, maybe you can guess what it is. Here, it's a pre-trivia question. What's the big knitting trend among, uh, with a pattern that everyone is knitting right now? It's the emotional support chicken. So mine is still a work in progress. I will show you what I have. All right, so it's not stuffed yet. It is all knit. But so this is the chicken, uh, the body of the chicken, and I put the beak directly on it. Um, so here, here it is. It's, you know, still flat here, but it's seamed. I did, I did sew up all the seams. Um, well, I guess there's just one seam so far, this, the tail here, but, uh, eventually it will be stuffed and all seamed together. Um, so here's, here's the, the body of the chicken. And then this will be the bottom of the chicken that will, it'll sit on. And then you also knit the, I think this is the waddle. Is that what they call it? And this is the comb that goes on the chicken's head. Um, yeah. So haven't, haven't stuffed it together yet. I think I'm going to like go raid my daughter's old stuffed animals and just borrow some polyfill um, from one of them because I don't want to buy a whole big bag or box of polyfill because I find I've, I've bought it in the past and like you'll never use it. I guess maybe some people would use it, but I will never use the whole thing in my lifetime. Um, and it's also like plastic. So let's try not to buy new plastics if we don't need to. We have a million stuffed animals that are not being loved. So I'm sure it will be fine to just sort of cannibalize one of them to stuff the chicken with. Um, but here it is. So I didn't use the kit. Um, you can buy kits for this in all different colors and they have little cute names. Um, those are from the Knitting Tree, which is actually kind of a local yarn store to me in Los Angeles. Um, it's, I mean, it's probably like more than a 20 minute drive from my house. So it's not super local, um, but it is in my city. But I didn't use a kit. I used uh, stuff, yarn from my stash. Um, the brown, or sort of the brown um, and color changing, is two yarns held double. So I held Green Mountain Spinnery Ragtime with one strand of Zauberball Crazy from Shoppelval. Uh, and the the colorway was green week, I think. So it's like a green and brown kind of thing. So I thought it was kind of good for an earthy chicken. Um, 
And then the contrasting color, which you can sort of see these little stripes, is this green. This is the Weekend Wool, also from Green Mountain Spinnery. So this was what I originally cast on this hat in, but ended up frogging. But So I used it for my chicken. And then the beak and the other parts were just... I held three fingering weight yarns from my stash, like scraps, um, together that all were like sort of yellow and sort of red. And they worked out. Um, yeah, so that's it. So, uh, you know, hopefully I will actually get this stuffed and I'll show it in my April video. It is blocked. I wanted to block the wool because it came out a little bit smaller than I was hoping or intending or imagining based on seeing other people's chickens. I don't think I'm a particularly tight knitter, but I do think sort of subconsciously, since I knew this was going to be stuffed, that I probably tightened up um, because I definitely like could feel it in my shoulders and my back um, the next day after working on it. So um, it it did come out a little smaller than I wanted, so that's why I wanted to block it to just like stretch it as much as I could. I think it'll be a decent size. I think I would like it to be larger. If it's truly going to be an emotional support chicken, I think it needs to be something you can hug in a larger way, I guess. Um, so we'll see how this works out. I might, you know, just end up giving this to my daughter as well because she loves loves a stuffed animal. So yeah. Emotional support chicken. All right, uh, work in progress. The next one is also using my Knit Picks Swish worsted. And oh, the color is Haystack Heather, if I didn't say that before. Um, so I'm gonna grab that one. So this one is the Dustland, Dustland? Dustland Cowl by Stephen West. And this is, it's a, it's a tube style cowl. So you cast it on sort of at this end and then you knit it in the round. It has a bunch of sort of Gansey or Guernsey um, knit pearl motifs. And it's, the pattern is sort of these three motifs. So it's like um, this diagonal line this sort of seed stitch and then this uh, broken rib, I guess is maybe what it's called. Um, but I was like, oh, I think that's going to get boring if I do this entire cowl in those three motifs. So I went to my um, Barbara Walker. Oh, what's it called? Hang on. A second treasury of knitting patterns. Um, so I think there's like four, three or four of these books that are just like uh, stitch dictionaries. Um, so I found um, a few in there that I thought would sort of not deviate too much from the original pattern. So there's this one here. That's when I added in. Then I was going to repeat the first three again. Then I'm going to add like another new one and we'll just kind of keep going like that um, just as a way to try different stitches kind of add some more interest to knitting it. Um, this one, as I said, it's the same color as the hat. Uh, so it'll be a nice little set when it's done. Again, this is the Knit Pick Swish Worsted, which is a superwash merino. So it is very soft, which is nice. I do think it's going to pill, which is not as nice. Um, but I don't have, I mean, I do have many more cowls than I really need. Um, so I'm not going to end up wearing it that frequently, possibly. So hopefully it'll kind of stay looking nice and new. I guess I could always deep pill it, of course. Um, yeah, so I think this pattern is actually written for sport weight yarn, but I didn't have any sport weight yarn in enough quantity and in a color that I thought would show off the stitch pattern. I had like some variegated sport weight, but I thought that would sort of be a waste of time because um, then you wouldn't be able to see the stitch pattern. So, and a waste of yarn. So uh, I just used a worsted weight and it's fine. You know, it doesn't, I can stop knitting it when it gets to the length I want it. And the width, I don't mind a, a wider cowl. So 
um, looks pretty good, I think. All right. Uh, and then my, my next work in progress is one that I mentioned in, I think my second video, which was about mini scarfs and mini shawls. And that is the Kira shawl by Amber O'Brien. Let me grab it. So got, got the needles on here, but so this is the Kira shawl by Amber O'Brien and it is a mosaic pattern using two yarns. I mean, I suppose you could use minis with this one, but I'm just using one color shifting yarn and one solid color. And this is actually the third time I have cast on this project because um, I started it in um, one yarn combination the contrast wasn't good enough then I started it again the contrast wasn't good enough um, I changed the solid color um, I was doing like a gray which I thought would kind of go well with this sort of muted um, color shifting yarn but it just didn't contrast enough so you, you really couldn't even t tell um, where the the two yarns began and end ended. So, um, I went to a local yarn store in Michigan, Michigan Fine Yarns, and I bought, um, a couple skeins of Cascade 220 in navy blue, and it just turned out so much better, um, to go with this other color shifting yarn, which let me show you, um, what the other yarn is. So I still have a full skein of it. So this is Making Tracks from Junction Fiber Mill. Um, so it's 100% American wool. It is dyed and spun in um, White River Junction, Vermont at, you know, at this local mill. Um, this is the colorway Valley Fog, which is not... These aren't necessarily colors I would normally wear. I'm usually drawn to like warmer, bolder colors. But um, I bought the these skeins at Rhinebeck because I just thought they were so pretty in person. Is that right? I might have ordered them after Rhinebeck, but I definitely saw them in person at Rhinebeck and, and thought they were nice. So uh, yeah, so that's the yarn that's in here. And it sort of, you know, shifts from a lavenderish to a bluish to a greenish back to a pinkish and a purplish um I think it turned out great it's I mean it's not done yet uh I'm a little over halfway done with the shawl it sort of comes to a point here I think I will probably end up uh, being able to get this whole shawl knit out of one skein of each of the Cascade 220 and the making tracks um, I have, you know, I have two of each if I need them, but I think it's going to end up, um, fitting in one. Um, and I really highly recommend this pattern. And one of the reasons I recommend it is that I think it's really easily modifiable. So you just, you know, there's like a chart and repeats of the chart. Um, so I was kind of actually intending to add a couple of repeats but then when I got to the center point, I actually thought the dimensions were pretty good. So I didn't add any, but you could. So you could use any yarn that you have. You, I mean, you could, it's, the pattern is written for either fingering or DK, but I think you could do this with a sport. You could do it with a worsted. I mean, the Cascade is a light worsted. Um, so yeah, I think you just, you know, follow the chart and knit it to where you want it. And then, you know, you can start decreasing. I really like this shawl shape. It's not unlike the Sophie shawl and many other shawls that are out there, but that's sort of very shallow um, triangle I appreciate. So it's almost more like a scarf than this sort of deep triangle shawl, which is nice when you're just like sitting there, but it's not like the most... Um, I don't think it's the most useful to wear under a coat, which is normally when I'm wearing scarves or shawls. So yeah. Um, 
what else to say about that one? I think that's it. So this is actually my first time using Cascade 220 um, non-superwash. This is the other uh, skein of it that I have. And I really like it. Uh, I guess there's a reason why it's a very popular yarn. It's super affordable. I think this was $11 um, for... 220, 220 yards, hence the name, Cascade 220, um, 220 yards in 100 grams. Um, so yeah, good deal. It's non-superwash, which I like. I'm trying to use more non-superwash yarns, especially when I bring new yarns into my stash. I'm trying to get away from superwash. Um, but it's, it's quite soft. I, I would imagine it's pretty hardy. Um, I have knit with the superwash version of this before, and that was, a, it's almost less soft somehow, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, so I may be ordering this in more colors, although I am trying not to order much new yarn, but we'll see. But of course, it, it comes in hundreds of colors, so uh, lots of options here. Um, okay, so I think there's there's two more works in progress that I am not going to share because they're kind of my long-term works in progress and I know I'm not gonna finish them next month. I didn't start them this last month. I started them last year. Um, so I'll share them at some point in the future. I'll tell you what they are in case you wanna go look them up or something. Um, I'm doing the DRK Everyday Socks and the Parallel Play Wrap by Stephen West. Um, but they're, again, they're both kind of like long-term. I just pick them up when I uh, kind of need something, I don't want to say boring, but they are kind of boring as patterns. Um, so kind of when you don't need to think about much or you just like have a couple minutes to, to knit on something, um, those I'm working on those in those kinds of situations. So I'll show them some other month. Okay. I think now I can show my acquisitions. So I talked about this, hmm, I don't remember which video I talked about it in, but I am trying to do kind of a low buy year this year, not necessarily to spend less money on yarn, although that is a nice side effect, um, but more so because I have a lot of yarn that I really like in my stash and I, you know, you can feel sort of pressured to use it up. Um, so I've been trying not to bring too much new in that would compete with the yarn I already have. But I did, like I said, take a trip to Michigan and I've been following Michigan Fine Yarns on Instagram. They seem like a really great local yarn shop. So, and they're in the town that um, I was staying in. So I was like, I have to go. Um, and I so rarely buy yarn in person that I just kind of wanted to treat myself to yarn that I could like touch and feel and actually see the real color of in person. So I did get a few things. Um, I got those two skeins of Cascade 220 um, to go with my color shifting yarn for the Kira shawl. And then I also got, I got two skeins of Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. So this one, this, I sort of broke my rule. It's not really a rule, but I'm trying again to stay away from superwash yarns and a little bit trying to stay away from man-made fibers. Um, just, I don't know. I'm not on a big, uh, you know, moral crusade about it, but I just feel like, well, if I'm trying to kind of be selective about the yarns I bring into my stash, at least um, maybe I'll try to support like, wool industry and local yarn to the extent that I can. Um, but so, so the Silk Garden Solo, um, sock solo is 40% wool, 25% silk, 25% polymede, um, and 10% mohair. So it does have some artificial fibers in it, but I was just taken in by the colors. I couldn't resist. Um, so it's sort of too greenish bluish colors and they have some sort of confetti um or tweed or I don't whatever you want to call it um 
spun into it. And I really wasn't sure what I was going to make with these. I started to cast on a um, great gingham hat, but then I, I realized that this yarn does not, I don't know, it just doesn't lend itself to a ribbed hat. Um, at least it didn't feel like it was as I was knitting with it. If you have made a ribbed hat with this yarn, let me know. Um, I'd love to see it, uh, see, you know, see your Ravelry project page or whatever. Um, but I think what I'm going to do with these is, um, oh, what is it called? Hollows? I think the shawl is called Hollows. Um, that, I, that doesn't sound right. I'll, I'll put the name on the, in the notes uh, below to make sure it is right. I, I'm pretty sure the designer is Melody Hoffman. Um, I saw the shawl on um, the Wool Needles Hands channel. Um, I think the pattern just calls for one color, but it's like different sections, like short row sections. So I do think these two sort of mildly contrasting colors will lend its, lend themselves really well to that pattern. And I think the fiber content of this yarn will make for a drapey shawl, which is kind of what you want with that shawl, I believe. So that's my sort of long-term plan for these. We'll see when I get to that. Um, but I'll update you if I cast it on. Um, okay, and then I got two other yarns in the same color family, actually, because I guess I'm just on a green kick. Um, these are Lucky Tweed from Kelborn Woolens. So this is another, well, like a brand that I have never seen in person, but I, I got to see it in person at this local yarn store. So um, I grabbed it this it's made in Ireland and it's like a Donegal tweed and the colors are ocean and fog. And I think I'll do a hat with these. Um, they're kind of a worsted or Aran weight yarn. Um, hundred percent Merino. And I'm fairly certain non superwash. They, it feels kind of rustic. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do like a color work kind of hat with these two colors. Probably this one closer to my face. I don't think I look so good in light colors. Um, so, but we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll update you when I cast that on as well. Um, and then one more thing I got, another thing that I have seen on podcasts, I feel like I saw it on the Espas Trico podcast, um, but I've never seen it in person. Um, and this is Make It Tweed, which is like a lace weight um, thread, essentially. I don't even, maybe it's less than lace weight. Um, but you hold it with a solid color yarn of some heavier weight and it essentially makes it tweed. So it makes it look like a tweed yarn. So I've seen, I think I've seen some objects sort of knitted up with this that look, they just look really cool. So I was like, oh, I got to get my hands on that. Um, and try it. And I, I think it's, I don't know if, how easy it is to find online. Um, but in any case, I saw it in person. So I decided to grab it. So there's that. And then, uh, yeah, so all of those were from Michigan Fine Yarns. Highly recommend them. They have an online store. So you can order online. I do intend to probably order from them again if I can, because it's nice to support a small business um, and they have a nice variety of sort of popular brands. Um, and I do think they have a lot of kits as well. That seems to be something they specialize in. So check out their Instagram, their website uh, if you want to. Okay, and then my other acquisition, I mentioned this a couple videos ago, I impulse joined the Junction Fiber Mill Millbox subscription so again, this is like a local mill in Vermont. And uh, once a quarter, I believe, they send out some special yarns to subscribers. So this was the first box for 2024. And I was anticipating this one because they have um, bought a new spinner that is allowing them to make different weights of yarn. So. Um, 
up until now, they've only been able to spin DK weight yarn, which this making tracks here is DK weight. Um, but now they can do sport weight. So I was kind of hoping we would get some sport weight yarn in the mill box, and we did. So I will show you what I got. So it comes in this nice little packaging. Comes with a little card that sort of explains what's in the box. And then it comes, it came with four skeins of, I believe these are 50 gram skeins. Uh, okay, well they don't have the weight on them, but it's 210 yards of sport weight. So maybe it's more than 50 grams. Um, maybe that's a, no. I don't, my, my math and conversion is not, not, working for me right now but in any case it's a generous amount of sport weight yarn um so it comes with two skeins of this is called farm fresh light and it is a blue faced lester blend uh the 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 wool comes from new york so it tells you the source of your wool um and i yeah this seems to be all natural colored um it's like a beige-ish color and then this is they're making tracks light and this is the colorway zinnia so this is you know it's the same idea of this yarn um, but in a lighter weight and these are meant to pair together maybe for some kind of color work i think these would make a beautiful kira shawl that shawl that i just showed um, in a lighter weight I'm not sure what I'll do with this. These, I don't wear these colors really, but, um, cause it's kind of a pinkish, but maybe a gift. Maybe, maybe somebody who's watching this will receive something knitted in these yarns someday. Um, but yeah, but I, it'll be fun to knit these up. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of color work patterns with color changing yarn, use um, spin cycle dyed in the wool which is a sport weight yarn so I think this would be a good substitute for that um, it's priced similarly so you know if you want the spin cycle get the spin cycle but if you want um, something you know from the northeast United States um, making tracks uh, from junction fiber mill is a good option and then of course they have different color colorways um, so you could check it out. I'm not sure how many colorways they currently have in the sport weight. They have a lot more in the DK weight, but I'm sure they will be expanding their line a bit as they, you know, keep using the new spinner. Um, okay. So that's all for my acquisitions. It's, it's a fair amount of acquisitions, um, but it's okay. Got to support small local businesses in all of these. Um, okay, so what else can I share with you? Uh, what I've been reading this month, um, thank you to everyone who commented on what I was reading last month, which was um, Life in the English Country House. Um, a few of you said that you ordered that book. I do think it's out of print now, so hopefully you were able to find the used copies somewhere. Um, so I hope you're enjoying that. Um, I'm reading a book in kind of a similar vein this month. I gotta like get this pile of knits out from on top of it. Um, so this is A History of Interior Design by John Pyle. And it looks a little worn because it is worn. I've had this book for like 23 years. Um, because for a short time in college, I majored in interior design. And I took um, a course on the history of interior design. And this was the textbook for it, um, or one of the textbooks. Um, and it's one of my favorite courses that I took in college to this day. I wish I could go take it again, which is why I'm reading this book again. Um, I'm not sure I read it closely in college. I mean, you don't really read the textbook. You kind of find the facts you need for the test, right? Um, so I'm reading it. Um, and it's like a survey of 
It's a lot of architecture. I mean, there's a bit of interiors to it. There's like furnishings and stuff, but it's a lot of architecture, really. Um, from sort of ancient civilizations like Egypt, Greece and Rome um, through like Middle Ages in Europe. Um, I've just gotten to about the middle of the book, which is like the colonial and federal era in America. Um, and then, um, you know, then we're going to move into the Victorian era and modernism and yada yada. So I don't know if you're interested in interior design, this would be fun. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a captivating read. It is kind of a textbook, but um, I'm a nerd. So I am reading a textbook for fun. Um, if you want to see if you can find, I, I'm not sure that this is in print either, um, but you could probably find a used copy somewhere or maybe your local library has it. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for this month. I think, um, we've got to do the trivia question. That's how we always end. So I've got two questions. Well, I always do one trivia question and a bonus question. So my first question for you is what is the most common breed of sheep in the United States? I tried to look up the most common breed of sheep in the world. I couldn't get a good answer for that. So uh, if you know it, go ahead and share it in the comments below. But I did find a source for the most common breed of sheep in the United States. Um, that source was a website called sheep101.info. So uh, I'm going to assume that's a trustworthy source. It seems like kind of an old school HTML website. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe they're sharing misinformation about sheep breeds, but I'm going to I'm going to trust them. So most common breed of sheep in the United States. If you know it or have a guess, go ahead and put it in the comments below. If you want to look it up, if you want to go to sheep101.info and find the answer, that is also encouraged. Um, because as I have said in my previous videos, it's not really about um, knowing the right answer. It's more about learning the right answer. So trivia is about learning and uh, expanding our knowledge. So uh, if you want to look up the answer to the trivia question, post below, go ahead. If you know it off the top of your head and want the glory, you can also say that in your comment uh, and you will get that glory if you're right. Um, okay, and then the bonus question is, what are the three main purposes for which sheep are raised? So I think that's pretty easy question. I think you can probably figure that one out without looking it up. Um, one of them, I'll tell you, one of them is wool. Um, but what are the other two reasons that people raise sheep? Okay, so those are the trivia questions. Go ahead and put your answer below if you would like. If you have any um, thoughts, any ideas for things to make with the yarn I've acquired, feel free to share. If you have knit any of the patterns that I talked about this time, I would love to hear how they went for you. If you made the emotional support chicken, please let me know. Um, and I think that's it. I'm not sure what the theme of the next video will be. I am thinking about talking about all the hats that I have knit, which is uh, a lot. Um, and sort of maybe thinking about why I still keep knitting hats, because there's always something that could be improved with each hat that I make. Um, so that, you know, it's a reason to keep trying, to keep trying a new pattern, try and get it just right. Um, so I might do that for my next video. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in a bunch of hat patterns, uh, and hearing what's good about them, what I didn't love about some of them, let me know and, uh, hit subscribe and you'll get it when it comes out in a couple weeks. Uh, if I end up doing that for my next video. Um, but then, uh, at the end of April, I'll have another check-in with all of these works in progress and, and some new projects probably. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.